He may not be the biggest guy in WWE, but Kalisto has still accomplished a lot in his career and has a strong following behind him. But this all wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for one phone call. Emmanuel Rodriguez, or as we know him as Kalisto, was born in the Lower West Side of Chicago, Illinois on November 14, 1986. Despite being born in Chicago, Kalisto spent his early years in Mexico City. This is where he was first exposed to wrestling, and specifically Lucha Libre. He was intrigued by the masks luchadors would wear and their aerial performances. Some wrestlers Kalisto gravitated towards were Octagon, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, Ultimo Dragon, and Tiniebles. Interesting too, because Kalisto and Octagon's paths would eventually cross. At the age of five, Kalisto and his family moved back to Chicago, but they continued to make regular trips to Mexico City, which only increased Kalisto's passion for wrestling. Once he moved back to the United States, his horizons were broadened as he got exposed to the WWE's supernatural character, The Undertaker, as well as the high-flying styles of Rob Van Dam and ECW. Kalisto's interest in wrestling grew as he did, and in high school, Kalisto started checking out the independent wrestling scene with companies like Ring of Honor. In 2006, Kalisto went from being a fan to becoming part of the show. At the age of 19, he joined Windy City Pro Wrestling School, which was also in Chicago, and began his training. It wasn't smooth sailing for Kalisto. At times, he felt like quitting, partially due to the strictness from his coaches because of his young age. Also likely because he was bouncing college classes and two jobs at the same time. But Kalisto didn't let that discourage him, and less than a month after joining the school, Kalisto had his very first ever wrestling match and performed under the name Samurai Del Sol, opting to spell Samurai with a Y at the end to differentiate himself from wrestlers with the name Samurai. For his first few years, Kalisto mainly just performed in the Midwest of the United States and continued to train as well as build his reputation. 2010 is when Kalisto's career picks up again. He began working outside the Midwest in states like New York and Pennsylvania and performed on larger stages. Perhaps his biggest achievement in 2010, though, was getting to wrestle in Mexico. This was a big accomplishment for Kalisto, and he was even featured on Mexico's largest TV network, Televisa. Just as things were looking up for Kalisto, though, they took a turn for the worst, as his career almost came to an end. In the spring of 2011, Kalisto was once again working in Mexico, this time for the promotion Disaster Total Ultra Violento, which translates to Total Ultraviolent Disaster. Coincidentally, that's what happened to Kalisto. During the match, Kalisto went to perform a double rotation moonsault to the outside of the ring. Kalisto overshot his mark and hit his head on the guardrail and landed on the concrete floor. Rumors claimed Kalisto was unconscious afterwards, but Kalisto has said he wasn't. Kalisto took two months to recover and stayed at his uncle and aunt's home in Mexico during that time. X-rays came back good, but Kalisto suffered from post-concussion syndrome. He described the effects feeling like he was drunk every day. The nightmare wasn't over, as during that time, back in Chicago, Kalisto's mother suffered a heart attack. Kalisto blamed himself for putting stress on his mother. Because of all this, Kalisto decided he was going to complete the rest of his bookings, sell all of his t-shirts and merchandise at Expo Lucha, and then retire from wrestling. Kind of interesting to think that everything we've seen Kalisto accomplish almost didn't happen, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. It's all thanks to one phone call that Kalisto got back into the game. His girlfriend, now wife, Abigail, called Kalisto while he was in Mexico and told him that WWE had invited him to a tryout. This rejuvenated Kalisto, and though the tryout didn't lead to anything immediately, it was enough for him to don his mask once again. Things picked up almost where they left off for Kalisto. In mid-2011, Kalisto got to be a part of the reality TV show, Quien Pinta Para La Corona. From what I could gather, this was a reality TV show where luchadors would compete for a contract with AAA one of Mexico's top wrestling companies. While Kalisto didn't win, he's able to train further, and this is where he said he perfected his career, under the tutelage of veteran luchador Gran Apache. He did eventually perform in a few matches for AAA in 2012, and soon after that got offered a regular spot in the company, and was put into a storyline, where he asked Octagon to train him, which Octagon agreed to. Octagon was a huge star in the 90s and a veteran in Lucha Libre. In November, Octagon was attacked in the ring, and Kalisto came to his rescue and fought off the attackers. Octagon then gave Kalisto a mask similar to his own, and was given the new name of Octagon Jr., but would still wrestle as Samurai Del Sol in the US. This was a huge honor and career move for Kalisto. In Mexico, it's common for a luchador to inherit a character or persona from a family member, so for Kalisto to receive the name without being related to Octagon was a very big deal. 
Octagon Jr. made his in-ring debut on December 2nd, 2012 at AAA's Guerrero de Titanes, where he teamed up with Octagon and La Parca and defeated Pentagon Jr., La Parca Negra, and Silver King. While AAA was keeping Kalisto busy in Mexico, back in the United States, he was competing in more high-profile independent wrestling organizations, such as Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Combat Zone Wrestling, Evolve, and more. He also won the Jeff Peterson Memorial Cup, which was an annual tournament produced by the promotion Full Impact Pro, and was kind of a big deal, especially as he's the last person to win the tournament before it ended. Also in 2012, Kalisto got another tryout with WWE, and this ultimately led to him signing with the company on May 26, 2013, and Kalisto was about to enter a whole new world. When he joined WWE, Kalisto cites NXT coach Norman Smiley as the one who helped him ease into the new environment. Smiley himself was impressed by Kalisto's urge to always wanting to get better. The staff at the Performance Center offers monthly evaluations of trainees listing their strengths and weaknesses. Smiley has noted that Kalisto was the only student who ever looked at his weaknesses first and wasn't concerned about his strengths. On August 29, 2013, the name Samurai Del Sol was no more, and Kalisto would be his new identity. On September 20th, Kalisto had his first ever match in a WWE ring when he took on Baron Corbin at an NXT live event. Kalisto would continue to train and perform at NXT live events for about a year, and in 2014, the WWE audience was properly introduced to Kalisto. On the May 8th, 2014 episode of NXT, Kalisto teamed up with fellow luchador El Local to take on the Legionnaires. Kalisto wasn't involved in most of the match, but gave a great intro to what he could do. Anyways, Kalisto and El Local got the win and would be in the tag team picture the next week. On the May 15th edition of NXT, the current NXT tag team champions at the time, The Ascension, demanded more competition. So, El Local and Kalisto answered the call and challenged The Ascension for the NXT Tag Team Championships at NXT TakeOver. While Kalisto and El Local put up a fight, they were unable to gain the tag team titles. This was Kalisto and El Local's second and last match in NXT, as they never tagged together afterwards. On the July 17th episode of NXT, it was made official that the two had parted ways during an interview with Kalisto. Also during that interview, Kalisto challenged the VOD villains to a tag team match the following week and said he would have a partner in time for their match. And he did just that. Their opponents making their way to the ring, the team of Kalisto and Kata. On July 24th, Kalisto teamed up with another luchador, this time in the form of Sin Cara, and the two were victorious in their first match together. Shortly after their team-up, they got involved in a tag team tournament where the winners would face the Ascension for the NXT Tag Team Championships. After three straight victories, Kalisto and Sin Cara became the number one contenders for the NXT Tag Team titles and faced the Ascension on September 11th at TakeOver Fatal 4-Way. While it was a tough matchup, Kalisto and Sin Cara's chemistry was able to overpower the Ascension and gain the victory and Kalisto's first championship in WWE. Immediately after the match, they announced they had an official tag team name. Today. We are the Lucha Dragons! Two weeks after their victory, the Lucha Dragons successfully defended their titles in a rematch against the Ascension, thanks in part to a distraction by Hideo Itami. The Lucha Dragons' next competitors would be the VOD villains after they won a number one contenders battle royal on October 30th. During the rivalry, the VOD villains did their best to get under the skin of Kalisto and Sankara, but the Luch Dragons ultimately shut down Aiden English and Simon Gotch at NXT TakeOver R Evolution and retained their NXT Tag Team Championships. Thus, the Luch Dragons ended 2014 undefeated and Kalisto ended the year with the championship in his possession. 2015 started out similar to how 2014 ended. On the January 8th edition of NXT, the VOD villains challenged the Lucha Dragons for the NXT Tag Team titles, but also like 2014, the Lucha Dragons were successful in keeping their championships. But by the end of the month, the Lucha Dragons had suffered their first loss, as they were defeated by Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy, and lost their NXT Tag Team Championships as well. The Lucha Dragons had their rematch on February 11th at NXT TakeOver Rival. Kalisto and Sin Cara fought strong, but were unable to regain the championships. At this point, Kalisto started to appear less often on NXT, the reason being because he was about to make the jump to the main roster. So next time on Wrestling History, we'll be looking at Kalisto's start in the WWE all the way up to the present. In the meantime, if you want to learn about the time Kalisto unmasked in the WWE, check out the Did You Know Wrestling on the King of Flight. I'm Zach, and I'll see you soon for part two.